Have you thought about using meditation or mindfulness to help treat your social anxiety? If you have, I have a, a long podcast video that gets into a lot of detail on this, but um, I wanted to give you guys a quick video that looked specifically at social anxiety and the research on this. So in this video, I'm going to get into what the studies tell us about how effective it is, what the mechanism is for why it might be helpful, and then also kind of the best ways that I see of getting started. Hi, I'm Thomas Williman, PhD. I'm a clinical psychologist. I specialize in treating social anxiety. And in this particular video, um, let's talk about meditation. So you probably have come across um, information by now telling you that meditation is helpful. There's a whole bunch of physiological benefits and psychological benefits. But how does it specifically apply to social anxiety? People have done research, we use it in treatment, so in this video I want to talk about that. So meditation is helpful for social anxiety, um, but sort of in a particular way. Um, what, you, what I would first emphasize is don't expect to be able to do meditation a couple of times when you're socially anxious and have your social anxiety go away. It's really not a short-term benefit technique. Um, in the research, we're looking at really longer-term use. Not in the moment. The research says that doesn't really do much for you. Um, instead, you want to look at over time, is it beneficial? So the research says yes. So moderate effect size, meaning it's moderately beneficial. Um, really quickly, there's different forms of um, psychological treatment that involve meditation. When we look at just the pure meditative techniques, so maybe eight weeks worth of meditation um, practiced in this particular style called mindfulness-based stress reduction, what you find is moderate improvement in social anxiety. However, there are several other treatments that involve meditation and those tend to do better um, probably because they include cognitive behavioral techniques which are still the gold standard for treatment. So if you meditate it is alone pretty beneficial but it's not as beneficial as the full actual psychological treatment. So you, my recommendation wouldn't be do no treatment and just do meditation. Instead, I think it's more effective to look at it as an adjunct, something additional that you could do as well as treatment. If you are not doing treatment and you're not planning to, then sure, um, maybe do an eight week online mindfulness-based stress reduction course and you should get some benefits. Um, however, if you've seen sort of previous podcast videos, you, you might remember that the results you get are about the same as doing some aerobic exercise. So to really improve, use meditation, but use it in the context of where you're getting full CBT treatment. That said, definitely meditate. There's a ton of benefits. Again, don't use it alone to treat your social anxiety. But adding it in, clinically, I find it to be very useful. And I think that's true because of a whole range of um, like sort of mechanisms that it gets involved in. So it can help in a number of different ways. So let's kind of briefly go through those and discuss why. Um, the first one is that when you are in the midst of meditating, your attention is being pulled away from all your worries and your ruminations up here. The worries, what's going to happen? Uh, the ruminations, what did happen? Sort of going over negative events in the head, um, which is, this is a, a huge part of social anxiety. So when you meditate, your attention is being drawn, for the most part, away from that thinking and thinking about it because you're trying to pull back and you're trying to focus on something else. Probably... A boring thing like your breath or an internal mantra. So that alone 
drops down your distress and tends to make people a little bit happier. Um, within this too is just a general, if you do this consistently, you're really engaging in an attention and an attention control practice, like you're retraining your attention. You're building up the muscle that chooses where your attention goes. This is really, really powerful for a couple of reasons. One, it means generally you can choose not to go up into this worry and rumination space, which tends to escalate anxiety and depression. So it gets you out of your head and out of ruminating and worrying, but also in the moment for social anxiety, um, we really want your attention not to be self-focused, we want you to be externally focused. We want you to be noticing the world around you. We want you to be noticing the people, engaging, listening to conversations. We don't want you focused on the self, analyzing what people are thinking about you, how you come across, how nervous you feel, how nervous you look. That stuff really escalates anxiety. So what we want is for you to develop this attentional control and externalize, get out of the head and externalize. And meditation is a technique that is teaching you to control your attention. You're noticing when you get distracted and pulled somewhere and you're deliberately choosing to focus back on the boring stimulus, generally the breath or a mantra. So very useful for that. Um, meditation also teaches you how to detach from your thoughts and your feelings. Um, so instead of feeling the full weight of it, you step back and you're observing it while it's happening. You still experience it, but you're not lost in it. You're observing from a distance. Um, if you do meditation for a while, you'll start to experience this, this observer self, this detachment. Um, it's really, really psychologically powerful. Um, and it, you know, it helps with your emotional regulation. It helps you to tolerate distress better, all of which is super, super useful. Um, in doing so, um, it helps you accept the emotions you're feeling. And sort of in conjunction with that, with meditation, you will feel emotion sometimes. Um, and with that detachment and observation, you'll notice if you're observing your emotions, uncomfortable as they might be, if you're observing them without trying to push them away or go to your head to argue against them or to fight against your emotions, what you'll notice is that they tend to go up and then they tend to come down. So the emotions tend to pass on their own. Uh, people that don't meditate have a much harder time with this, um, just automatically start fighting. So this is really a great benefit. It's just noticing emotions pass. And if emotions pass, you don't need to kind of worry about them or get so activated by them. Um, one of my uh, clients once noted that this was one of his biggest benefits from therapy, was learning that he could tolerate negative emotions and that they would pass and therefore he didn't have to get too worked up about them. So that's very, very beneficial also. Um, this alone helps you tolerate distress. Levels of distress come down just by learning that you can feel and accept emotions and that they'll pass. Um, doing that is also a type of emotional exposure. So whatever the trigger is that gives you those emotional reactions, if you can sit back and let those emotions pass, just observe them, then that's an exposure. The next time you're faced with that trigger, you won't have such a strong reaction. So meditation can also be exposure to negative emotions. Um, another piece of this, another benefit too, is again that kind of detaching, that observing. It helps you realize that thoughts are not the truth. So thoughts are just passing events that happen in, in the mind. If you see thoughts, as being the truth, then if you have a bad thought, the world seems terrible, the situation seems terrible. So common to both meditation and to cognitive therapy is this idea of stepping back, observing the thoughts, realizing they're just thoughts, and 
then choosing kind of what to do with it. Either it's just observing or in cognitive therapy, it's starting to analyze and question the thoughts a bit. Um, some of the research has found that uh, learning how to step back, detach, and observe thoughts autom kind of automatically leads us to um, be less likely to do probability overestimation, which is one of the two kind of biggest triggers um, in cognitive therapy. So just meditating can help you become less prone to overestimate the likelihood that things will go wrong. That alone, those are many benefits that we found kind of mechanism wise, but there's also sort of a special case for one type of meditation that's called loving kindness meditation or compassion meditation. Um, and these are great um, in a couple of ways. One way because it gets you not focused on the self anymore, which just like self-focused attention triggers your anxiety. It gets you focused on other people you're not thinking about your own problems, you're thinking about other people. You're caring about them, you're being compassionate to them. That alone is pretty beneficial. Um, but also, as part of that process, there tends to be a focus on, first of all, being compassionate to the self. And it looks like in sort of recent research, there's an overlap between self-compassion and social anxiety, such that if you can increase your self-compassion, your social anxiety will probably come down. So that particular form of meditation might have some additional benefits. All meditation is kind of less evaluative of the self. So all meditation is non-judgmental. It's less critical of the self. But this particular meditation also really encourages you to get away from yourself. Both really important mechanisms. Okay, lastly, how to start? Well, you got a few different options. One, you can go to the apps. So, very popular apps. Headspace, probably the most popular for the people I work with. Then there's the Calm app. Um, I personally like Deepak Chopra apps because he does mantra-based meditations, which just work better for me. Um, if you don't feel like doing apps, you can still digitally do one of these mindfulness-based stress reduction courses online. You don't have to be in person to do those. Just a quick search, you should find those. A third option is going to like a course or um, a meditation studio where they will lead you through the practice of meditation. Um, a benefit to that is you get social contact, which is just healthy for you anyway, and it doubles as a social exposure because you're around other people and you may or may not get to interact with them, but you'll at least be in the area. So that gets you just in social environments more, which is an exposure. Um, last option is the super simple and cheap version, which is um, you just do it on your own with nothing. So this is actually fairly simple to do. Really, really quickly, you pick a boring stimulus, either your breath or a simple mantra like rum, and you just focus, you close your eyes and you focus your attention for a few minutes on that stimulus. So let's say five minutes focusing on the breath or five minutes focusing on the mantra, rum, 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 rum. And all you're trying to do, this is, this is meditation in general, all you're trying to do is focus on this boring stimulus and when your attention gets pulled off up into your head or into your body or to a sound outside, when it gets pulled away, you just realize after it's happened, which it will constantly, and you just redirect your attention back to the boring stimulus. And then you get distracted again, and you do it again. And you just do this again and again and again for five minutes. That is a really simple, free, quick way to do the actual important mechanisms in meditation for social anxiety. Okay, hope that was helpful. Um, please uh, subscribe, please like, please leave me comments, please ask me things, I try to respond to those. Okay, thank you.